Hello and welcome, it's Jilly Cube and I'm here in Queensland, Australia, coming to you with a resin pour today, something a bit different for me. Um, I have done a few resin pieces, but not too much. I'm showing you my face respirator and that is why I'm doing a voiceover because if you're working with resin, no matter what it tells you on the packaging, that you don't need uh, protection you really do so you need a full face respirator you need apron you need gloves and you need protective glasses so um, and today I'm using that eParency resin which is a gorgeous resin that is the silicon mold that I made um, I'll link the video if you're interested. I'll, I'll put it in the first comment or also in the description box below. I am basically doing this particular resin piece today and, and testing out in the small um, moulds there in readiness to pour on that, that big sculpted panel mould that I made. I made that sculpted panel mould out of uh, silicon. So I want to see what style I want to put in it. So I'm just testing on a smaller project today. So with this eParency epoxy resin, it is one of the clearest bubble-free resins that I have used. It's very easy to use, especially if you're a first, you know, you're not very confident with the resin. Or, you know, it's your first time. It's very clear and it's very nice resin, I must say. No bubbles or anything. So I've used this resin as well to coat previous works. Uh, you know, if you want a nice shiny resin coat, it, uh, there's a not this particular one. There's one just meant for a top coat. Uh, this one you can do, um, well, it's a quick drying, but you can do deeper work, but not over a certain depth. It's got all the information on the eParency site. You can get them from Capriole Shabby Chic. The link is below where you can order your eParency resin. I'm also using the uh, Colour Art resin um, pigments that you see there. So you can get those in the US because they are made in the US. And so there are lots of plots, suppliers for the Colour Art in the US. And here in Australia, um, Capriol Shabby Chic supplies them, so that's where I've got mine from. I am mixing this resin. It was um, a two to one ratio, so 100 mils of resin and 50 mils of the hardener. And it's just basically um, making sure all the resin is out and then giving your resin a really, really good stir so you do not miss any bits on the side of the container or anything. That's kind of secret to success in the resin is measuring accurately and really mixing really, really well. As you see there, I'm going to use some of the Colour Art resin pigments. I'm going to use some um, Pinata ink. I'm just trying one of them and I've got the other ink there. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. I'll lift it up in a minute and have a look at it. Um, yeah, so I just was, you know, to try the resin pigments and the ink and that other um, I think it's Artelia, I'm not sure. So um, I had watched a young girl or a girl called Luna Designs do this particular feathery thing pattern, but um, I don't think, I think I have to re-watch it again um, because she got amazing results with feathers. So I have to re-watch it in case I got some measurements incorrect or whatever um, in my particular efforts here. But it's just pouring, I'm just pouring the clear resin into the, um, 
moulds and then I will mix my colours with the remaining resin. So I've just got the clear resin in the moulds and now I've got some clear resin in those little containers there um, and I'm just adding a bit of the pigments to them and I will add some of the inks also. So I've, yes, it is Artelia ink white. So I'm just adding a couple of drops. See, I don't know if I added too much or not enough or whatever. Um, couldn't find any way that it'd give me exact, everybody's like me, add a bit of this and add a bit of that and go for it. And that's what I'm basically doing is, um, I haven't tried this particular method before, so I'm just giving it a go. And I will definitely do it again and um, see if I get what results I get next time. But yeah, just giving it a real good mix and adding some more resin to it because I have it left over. So I might as well just add it to all the colours and then I can, um, what I've got left over, I've got some more extra moulds there that I can use. So the next bit that Luna designed did, she put a few drops of just alcohol into the colours, so I'm doing it. She, I didn't say how many she did, but she just gave it a good stir with the alcohol in it. Maybe I didn't put enough in, I'm not sure. Um, but that's what she did in the video that I watched of Luna Design, so I will have another look at that video and see if I can work out exactly how much she was putting in, because she, she uh, didn't do any voiceover or instructions. It was just um, some uh, written instructions coming up on the screen. So I will give it another go. But yeah, so literally this is what I've seen her do. This was the resin that she poured into the molds and she come along and did the drips with the paints or well, nice little circles, unlike me, I'm slap dap happy and all over the place. Um, I'm thinking now that she maybe left the resin that there was underneath the first coat probably an hour or so before she come and put the colours on, I'm not sure. So if anybody knows the secret of this, um, if I'm what I'm doing wrong, please, yeah, I'm happy to be uh, corrected. <laughs> so I was enjoying the process anyway.
Okie doke. I, um, as you've seen, I'll put them into those and that one, all of my uh, little thingies. And then I forgot to add the white, the one I mixed with the pigmented ink. So I added that after. This one, I had to get a spare one because I had more um, resin left. So I just put solid colours in there with bits and bobs of what I'd got left. That one was the same as that one. Then I still had a little bit of resin left, which I put in this mould, the pyramid mould, the chakra, chakra, chakra. So what I'll do is I'll just, every time I have spare bits of resin, I'll just put it in there and let it mount up before I um, pull it out. So I am going to um, stir a few of these up just with the skewer so to just do some wiggles in them as I said before it was a girl where's my little wiper it's gone now a girl that called uh well it was Luna Designs I'm not sure what the lady's actual name is Luna Designs I will put a link on that I've seen on YouTube uh, do this style but I don't know if I've done exactly as she's done, um, but this is what she did. So some of the colors she left for two hours before she squiggled. So I might leave the, that one for a bit longer before I do any squiggles in it. And these ones I'll just do the squiggles wiggles or whatever you call like to call them so it's just sort of any anything you like i suppose i've already done that one did i do that one no it's just kind of mixing the colors a bit i guess so this will be exciting when i come to um pull them out of the mold I've done those two this was the one that with the leftovers. So this has actually hasn't got much other colors in it, but I thought I'll just bung them in these little um, jewelry molds. That seems gone stringy look. So I'm not sure that one only had it, had that white alcohol ink. Maybe I've left it too long. I don't know. Just try it, hey? you just got to be in it to win it. So I'm just going to give these yep, a little squiggle. They are kind of going off, so kind of worried if I leave that one any longer that it won't be, might be too set. But anyway, This is my first attempt, so I've got to just, you know, just do what I think, I suppose. Okay. I have no idea what these will turn out like, but I think I'm going to go through this. Let me just try maybe an area. Yeah, it kind of feels as though it's thickening up, so I don't want to leave it any longer before I do this through it. It'll be interesting anyway, I'm sure. <laughs> Something I haven't done before. So remember, I'm testing this particular technique or method because I want to see how it reacts because if it's really nice then I'll do it on that big tile uh, panelled panelled mould that I've made and if not then I won't it's kind of going off so be very interesting okie doke I'm done enough I'm gonna leave those now and I will be back to pull them out of the mold so here is the moment I did uh, take them out of the second one and they're 
nothing really special. The kind of dogs colours sort of didn't mix well. So that plain one looks quite nice. I'll give her my granddaughters will love these. I'll there's a green one, another green one. So yeah, those not too exciting, I must admit. I mean, the resin is lovely. I had no bubbles or anything in the resin. The other one from this tray, they look a little bit nicer. As you can see, they're a little bit nicer. Ooh, but they've not got that feathery effect like I seen the girl in the video. Um, so I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board with that one. They're pretty, but not, certainly no feathery effect like in the video that I watched. So I will um, re go over it and have a look. Now for this, I'm not expecting this to be any different. Uh, oh, oh, it's pretty, but it's not, um, no feathery effects. I think that she must leave the resin to dry for a while before she adds the colour. There must be a trick to it. So if anybody knows the trick, because I'm not a resin artist, let me know. That is pretty, but it's not super duper. I won't be doing that effect in my big um, mould, new mould that I've made, but that's pretty, but not, you know, super duper. Now I've got that bit of resin in the bottom of there, which is set, but which I suppose I can get out. <laughs> it's a little teeny tiny, cute, but I will leave it in there and then I'll, each time I have some spare resin, I will put the resin in there and do that. Okie doke, well, that's my first attempt. So, um, it's pretty, but it's certainly not feathery effect or cloudy. So I will try again. 